hello hopefully all of you are doing good now this particular video will be an interesting one and with this video i will be starting a new playlist as well on a new way of creating splunk dashboard now as you may know very recently splunk has released a new version called 8.2.0 with it they have included a lot of good features and one of it is a new way of building a Splunk dashboard. So they basically included a new app called Splunk Dashboard Studio with which you can build Splunk dashboard in a very different way and it is very futuristic as well. So we will see how, how to build dashboard in this new way and that's why I will be developing this particular playlist as well. So in this particular video, we will be mainly talking about the introduction part and what is the difference between the older way, basically the classic way of doing or creating the dashboard and this new way of creating the dashboard. Then as we go on, we will see more technical stuff about this particular app. Okay. So to start with, so what is Splunk Dashboard Studio? So it's basically a, as I told, it's a new way of building a Splunk Dashboard using lot of tools and the main part of it is 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 very customizable compared to whatever we have in our classic xml dashboards of course we can do other customization using javascript and css as well but lot of things are inbuilt in this particular dashboard studio app now before we go further let us try to get a overview of what are the current frameworks available for creating dashboard in Splunk, then we'll maybe talk about the dashboard studio more. So as we already know, we have the simple XML framework, right? Where we can use the XML structure to create the dashboards. And also we have XMLs with the JavaScript and CSS extension as well, which can be very handy as well. And which adds a lot of customization to the dashboards as well, right? Now there is another way called HTML dashboard, but generally Splunk does not recommend it. And I think Splunk will deprecate its support as well in near future because HTML dashboard has a lot of issues with the compatibility issues, basically with the Splunk upgrade and those stuff. So maybe that's the reason they are moving from the HTML dashboard to this dashboard studio framework, which is the new one and which adds a lot of customizations option as well and I think th this is the initial release so in future maybe they will be adding more features to it so that it will be more robust and more user friendly and as well as more customizable as well. So with this idea let's go to a comparison where we will try to see first what is the different options available for the classic dashboard as well as the dashboard studio. So first thing is the layout option and which is I think a an amazing one. So in the classic dashboard, we only have this row column structure, right? So we create rows. So inside the rows, we create a lot of panels, which basically a, we basically a column structure, correct? So only this structure is available in the classic dashboard. Now in the dashboard studio, there are two options available now. One is called the absolute layout, another is called the grid layout. So let we will see more about these two options as well. Now, so basically in the classic dashboard, you, you just put those visualizations in a row column structure, correct? But in the dashboard studio, you will have like pixel perfect placement, like you can drag and drop those visualizations anywhere in that particular dashboard. So it's basically we create a canvas first and then we can place our objects anywhere by just using the drag and drop option using our mouse itself or keyboard as well. And as well as we can upload our own icons, you can even there are a lot of icons available out of the box as well, you can use that even you can change the dashboard background image as well, background color as well. Even you can import or basically upload your own image as well inside the dashboard as well, which is very cool. And in the classic dashboard, basically we can modify basically the width of the visualization using our mouth, right? I think you know already that particular feature. So there is a one dot comes uh, 
at the end or basically the bottom portion of the panel where which you can drag basically to make it bigger now in the dashboard studio basically in the absolute layout to be very specific so you can use your mouse to drag and drop and and resize as well as per your need we will see some examples dashboard as well which created with this dashboard studio so that we can get an idea like how it will look like and in future we will try to create our own stuff as well and now another good thing about this classic dashboard is when you basically resize the browser the layout automatically scales the dashboard accordingly but this is the one problem with the dashboard studio where by default it does not automatically resize the according the according to the browser size basically scales the dashboard according to the browser size but there are certain configuration you can do which we'll see in later videos as well how to do achieve that one okay so if you see like over here we only talking about the absolute layout we did not touch the grid layout till now now let's talk about the grid layout now grid layout is the most simplistic way of creating dashboard in dashboard studio so it's just something like in in row wise you can drag and drop those panels and create just something like this row column structure itself but it has a grid kind of layout over there okay and in the grid layout basically there is a one problem is like if you have many visualizations the other visualizations will sync automatically to accommodate that other visualization so that the size of the all visualizations will be proportionally fit to that particular row okay so which sometimes does not look good as well so as per splunk the grid layout is basically for initial purpose like if you want just want to create a dashboard initially with very lesser amount of customization you can do with grid layout then you can move it to absolute layout as well and grid layout has very lesser number of customization option as well compared to the absolute layout, layout whatever we discussed over here okay so so if you are using dashboard studio most of the times maybe you will be stick to absolute layout only until unless like you are trying to create a very initial prototype then maybe you can work with this grid layout over here okay so let's move on so if we just compare the features available for this grid and the absolute layout so if you see like regarding the charts by default splunk comes with out of the box lot of charts like the bar, the bar chart or the column chart or pie chart right so it's available for both the absolute layout and grid layout now the background color as i told in the absolute layout you can change the dashboard background color as well which you cannot change in the grid layout even the canvas size in absolute layout it is customizable in the grid layout it is not customizable that's why like if you when you add more visualizations to the rows right the other visualizations will be automatically sync over there maybe i'll try to show one example as well today and the number of visualizations in absolute layout there is no limit but in grid layout it depends on width of the visualizations as well now apart from that this in absolute layout we can add shapes icons images as well which not supported at all in the grid layout that's why i told like in dashboard studio most of the times you will be building dashboards with the absolute layout only and and as this is the initial release maybe in future splunk will add more features to this grid layout as well but which we do not know at this point so now let's talk about the second distinguishable factor between this classic dashboard and the dashboard studio now in the classic dashboard like which our current framework we are having we are mainly predominantly using simple xml to create our dashboard although you can create the full dashboard in javascript as well but anyway there will be a simple xml structure as well which will hold those html divs as well where you will be rendering your javascript objects over there right so you have to use the simple xml for dashboard rendering purpose in classic dashboard framework now in the dashboard studio it is fully on the json json formatted components and stanzas so we are fully using json over there although most of the stuffs there are a lot of stuffs you can do from the ui itself but there are certain stuff for which you need to go to this json and change the change it over there which we will see as well 
in 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 future videos so this is the one main difference we are having now in the dashboard studio now let's talk about what are the different visualizations feature available in our classic studio sorry classic xml dashboard framework versus the dashboard studio now if you see this particular table which you can get it from the splunk documentation site as well so most of the splunk out of the box charts like the area line bar column the pie charts gauge single values are all available in as it's only also it's available in classic xml it's also available in dashboard studio as well okay now the main difference is coming up compared to the classic xml dashboard is the splunk build custom visualizations we are not talking about the splunk out of the box visualizations over here we are talking about the some splunk based visualizations which also built by splunk so which are not supported at this moment in the dashboard studio so we need to keep in mind that one but in future definitely i think splunk will be allowing building that feature as well again the third party visualizations which other people build as well that is also not supported at this moment now another thing is the cluster maps which is not currently supported as well if you see it over here and now there are certain features which is not available in the splunk classic xml dashboard which is available in the dashboard studio is the single value with the icon so this is a really interesting one because i saw a lot of requirements where we want to display a picture or a shape or any icon with the single value right so that is uh, available out of the box in the dashboard studio which is not available in the classic xml but we can easily do with uh, with uh, js and css as well with the html tags whatever we can easily do it as well but now it is available in the dashboard studio as well oh, another thing is that there is a code plate map with svg images so that is not available in the classic xml which is available in the dashboard studio as well this is also an interesting feature and as i told like this shapes you can draw shapes lines text boxes icons and images which are not at all available in the classic xml but we can do it with the js which is by default available with the dashboard studio as well okay so these are the visualizations level differences or the features which are available in classic xml compared to the classic uh, sorry which are available in the dashboard studio and the classic xml okay now let's talk about some more stuff about the data and the searches now in our current classic xml dashboard we can create searches right with the search tag in our dashboard correct and we can create the post process searches as well we can create base search then refer that base search in our panel level searches which basically create a chain search or post process search right so all those things are available in the dashboard studio as well even we can access the schedule save search as well right and the reports as well right so all are available in the dashboard studio as well and classic xml obviously obviously it is available now only difference is that so when you'll be creating the dashboards with the dashboard studio you need to define the data sources like whether it's a save search or chain search something like this one so that is not available with the classic xml now okay so we will see that one like example of this one as well in future videos so that is the new stuff coming into the dashboard studio the data source we need to define over there now let's move on now let's talk about overall dashboard level what are the feature available in classic xml and the dashboard studio so as we saw like inputs are supported in both of this framework now drill down in classic xml we can do extensive level of drill down over there right drill downs with tokens and all of this but in the dashboard studio it is very limited drill down available so you cannot drill down which are actually having some tokens in dashboard studio currently it is not supported but i think in future definitely it will be supported uh, which we do not know at this moment similarly for tokens as well in classic xml for all those inputs we can define token as well as we can define our own token as well correct and when the search completes we can define some tokens as well over there right 
so in dashboard studio only the input level tokens are available you cannot define tokens when the search completed like in the search done tag or progress tag you cannot do that at this moment so we have limited token availability in the dashboard studio at this moment now again tokens for the visualization so it is only available for the inputs over here input controls over there okay now tokens in the base search chain search and save searches classic xml of course supports it but in the dashboard studio it supports it but you cannot have the save search with token over there it is not supported at this moment but in classic xml you can do that one as well tokenized save search over there right now as we talked about the layout layouts level so it is only supporting the row column layout but it's also supports the dashboard studio supports both of this absolute and grid layout correct now this is really interesting one content export of the single visualization and content export of the dashboard so in dashboard studio you can basically export the single value or any panel visualization as a png or and gif Uh, format and that will look exactly whatever we are showing up in the dashboard as well which is not possible in the classic xml so you cannot export it for a particular panel correct again in classic xml there are a lot of issues with the dashboard export correct because it does not sometimes it does not render it properly in the pdf and all but in dashboard studio that particular feature is inbuilt and it look exactly same as we have in the dashboard and two important stuff about classic xml is we can use js and css to build lot of cool stuff which is currently not supported in the dashboard studio but hopefully i think in future splunk will allow this one as well this will be a really great feature to have it okay so these are all the dashboard level comparison between these two frameworks so if you want like if you want to use this js and css you have to stick to this cl classic xml dashboard as of now but if you want to have like a dashboard which looks really cool without a lot of effort and you do not it does not require any kind of js and css to look uh, to basically change the look and feel of the dashboard or functionality of the dashboard you can go for the dashboard studio as well but for that you need to basically first move to splunk 8.2 2.0 as well first okay so hopefully we got an idea about how these two frameworks are differ from each other what are the their pros and cons let let's see couple of examples today like how this dashboard studio works and how dashboard looks like in the dashboard studio then maybe from next video onwards we'll talk more about some other fun stuff now let us try to see first how dashboard looks like in dashboard studio made with dashboard studio so if you see it like currently i am using splunk version 8.2.0 now the dashboard studio app by default it is not visible so for that what you need to do is you need to go over here and if you see it there is a app called splunk dashboard studio i'll just launch that app now and if you see it like it has a example hub from where you can basically see how the visualizations will look like everything the search and data so you can explore like how to create ad hoc search base search and chain searches everything even there are certain examples of the completed dashboards as well if you see it like in this link so if i open it you will see the powerful dashboards created with uh, splunk dashboard studio maybe let me try to open certain one certain dashboards over here so if i just click over here okay so this is kind this is a airport matrix dashboard and analytics so you'll see this is how it will looks like and if you see the source code of the dashboard it is fully in the json structure over here okay we will try to see to try to analyze as well like how we will be creating this json structure and how we'll be creating these dashboards as well over here let's try to see some other dashboards as well it looks really cool it, at least i am getting lot of ideas like how we can create a cool dashboards from here i think hopefully you will be also getting some really good ideas see this one this is a assembly line dashboard 
and if you see it over here you can create this kind of complex structure in your dashboard as well using this dashboard studio so it is really promising and hopefully it will be we will try to create our own dashboard as well with the similar kind of visualizations and see whether it can how it will look like so if i just go back now i i'll go to search and reporting app and i'll go to this dashboard tab over here now once you want to create a new dashboard in splunk 8.2.0 this i'll just click on this create new dashboard if you see now it is giving us two options the classic dashboard which you will be building it with xml the dashboard studio which will be building it with this new json structure right and if you see it like once you selected that it's giving you the two options like absolute layout or the grid layout over here so if you choose the absolute layout and create it so you can give some name called test one i was experimenting something with this dashboards as well so here if you see like we have a canvas kind of stuff which you can color it using this background color even you can assign some background images as well you can bring your own images as well over here okay there you can add graphs you can add like this kind of inputs as well even you can add lot of search icons as well over here if you see it and if you see like you can drag and drop it and you can resize it as well according to your need and you can place it anywhere in this particular canvas according to your need even you can draw some shapes as well like ellipse as well over here from this one and if you see like there are certain actions option over here like you can delete it from here you can add layers we will see that one as well you can clone it as well like this one okay and from here i can make it as move backward so i can create this kind of images as well over here correct even you can upload your own image as well to this particular dashboard so lot of stuff you can do and to see the source code you can you need to go over here and if you see like it is fully in the json structure over here okay so we will talk about like different nodes over here the mandatory nodes over here to create this dashboards in in later videos as well so this is the absolute layout so if i just go to dashboards again i'll just not save it now create new dashboard and dashboard studio in the grid layout so i'll just give it a name in the grid layout okay it's already there test 2 it's it's the most simplistic layout if if you see it over here okay so which if i just want to add some visualizations i can do it and then that's a line graph i i can drag and drop over here with a single rows over here if i just add more and more visualizations to the row if you see it is all are syncing correct to make arrangement for this particular row over here okay so this is like simplistic layout possible in in splunk dashboard studio but if you see like you cannot change the background color you cannot upload any image over here as we were able to do in the in the dashboard uh, sorry in the absolute layout but over here it is very simplistic in nature okay so hopefully we got a fair idea about what the different options available in the dashboard studio compared to the simple xml dashboard and what are the different layout options we have in the dashboard studio so in next video onwards we will try to explore more about the more technical stuff about this particular app and this dashboard creation process while doing that we will talk about different visualizations as well and how we will be configuring it from the ui as well as from the back end as well okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next